interviews, Peter Strzok, the guy who was running the Russian investigation at the FBI, Peter Strzok, Mr. Super Agent at the FBI, I think he's the guy who took the application to the FISA court. And if that happened, I mean, think if this happened, if you had the FBI working with a campaign, the Democrats' campaign, taking opposition research, dressing it all up and turning it into an intelligence document and taking it to the FISA court so they could spy on the other campaign, if that happened, that is as wrong as it gets. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. You can clear it all up. You can clear it all up for all of us here, all the Congress who wants to know, and frankly, all of America who wants to know. You can clear it all up by release. We sent you a letter two days ago. Just release the application. Tell us what was in it. Tell us if I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. I think that's exactly what happened. And if it did, it is as wrong as it can be. And people who did that need to be held accountable. Surely you've examined the definition and the distinction between extreme carelessness and, um, and also uh, ex extreme carelessness and, uh, and, and the gross negligence that's within the statute. Are you really going to tell us today that you don't have an opinion on that distinction? Uh, gross negligence is the language in the statute, I believe. Uh, but I believe also that almost anybody who grabbed a thesaurus would say that gross negligence and extremely careless are pretty darn close to each other. The Democrats are actually scared that the whole Russia investigation is going to turn against them. I mean, these are pretty remarkable revelations that uh, we saw yesterday with Christopher Wray, who, by the way, is another deep state operative. He was part of the Enron prosecution with Wiseman and Comey. And, you know, it's pretty clear that that was a, uh, an operative uh, prosecution that was largely discredited, overturned in the district, uh, the circuit courts. Uh, and Christopher Ray was part of that operation. Yesterday, he refused to answer questions about whether this Fusion GPS dossier, the discredited dossier, was used to get FISA court approval to wiretap electronic surveillance on the Trump campaign. And I think it's very clear, as Jim Jordan pointed out yesterday in the House Judiciary Committee, that this is at the core of the corruption. And now we find out that this judge who recused himself in the Flynn prosecution, we didn't know why until we found out that he is on the FISA court and could be perhaps the very one who gave the FBI approval to wiretap Trump and his campaign based on this lying fake dossier and now I mean, we've got uh, fake indictments out of the swamp out of these kept grand juries and the word is Mueller's looking at an indictment maybe even of Trump by Christmas are they crazy enough to try to pull this off when in front of God country and the whole world naked as jaybirds they're uh, all one big crew engaged in massive fraud openly Following the oversight hearing, Representative Trey Gowdy wrote on Twitter, When all other institutions we trust, including Congress, appear to be broken, we want to be able to look to the FBI. I am counting on Director Ray to go back to work for the blindfolded woman holding a set of scales. Well, we'll see about that. The FBI needs to begin by investigating itself. John Bound reporting for Infowars.com. All right, and I'm David Knight, and we're here live, and right after the break... We're going to give you an update on what's happening in the Roy Moore election, the Alabama Senate election. That's what I call it, the Roy Moore. It's his to lose. It's a highly Republican area. We're going to see what happens in that and what is happening. More news breaking in that, as well as the Pentagon will be audited. There are trillions of dollars missing. They even have 44,000 troops they can't account for. I mean, this is, this is serious stuff, folks. Stay with us when we come back. Welcome back. I'm David Knight on this Sunday, December the 10th. You know, it's amazing because this last week we had CNN come out and say, Trump, the promise keeper. That's what's got them so upset. They never expected him to do half of what he said he was going to do. And here we are a year in, and he's delivered on quite a bit of stuff in spite of the fact that you have the uni party leaders, both Republican and Democrats, who have tried to block him on every uh, measure. And even people in his own cabinet, which um, it's, it's interesting how he has surrounded himself with people who are against the agenda that he campaigned on. And yet he continues to outmaneuver them and shut them down and deliver on his agenda. One of these items was, of course, the moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, the announcement that he would do that. But also recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of uh, Israel. And it got all these Democrats upset. 
they're really uh, uh, angry about this. And here's two of them. As we've got Julian Assange tweets out, says, Bernie Sanders, along with 90 other senators, unanimously voted to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem just this last June. You know, we've talked about the, the Jerusalem Embassy Act that was passed in 1995. In the Senate, it was passed 93 to 5. And I would imagine if you go back and look, I'm, I'm just guessing here, but Sanders and Feinstein have been there for so long, they probably were uh, the ones who voted for it even back in 1995. And since then, we've had all these presidents not doing what they said they were going to do. They would promise so that they could get elected. They would promise certain interest groups. And that's the key thing to understand here. Whether you agree with this or not, Understand the way the politicians lie to us and the way these people are complicit. Because we saw the same thing happen on the Republican side with Obamacare. They kept coming out and saying, oh, we're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to campaign on that. We're going to have votes to shut it down and so forth. But then when it could really pass, the Republicans refused to vote for it. And so you see on the Democrat side, they kept promising their constituents in areas where they had a lot of Jewish voters who wanted to see this happen. The majority of Americans don't really care. More than 50% of Americans don't care where the embassy is, or they think that it was already in Jerusalem. They already thought we'd recognize that as a capital. But there's about a quarter who are very strongly for, and another quarter that are very strongly against. And these people are people that could be used uh, when it comes time to run for office. Dianne Feinstein was one of these. She's out there saying, this is a terrible decision. It is dangerous. There's a reason. That for the last several decades, all these presidents have not done this. And now you've done this <laughs> because he said he would. And you said you were going to do this and you got elected and you took money from these lobby groups who wanted the embassy moved. You voted for it multiple times, Dianne Feinstein, and now you're outraged because Donald Trump actually did it. And that's what we see all the time. We see it on our issues as well. That's the way these people govern. And that's the thing that is so amazing to us and so refreshing and so infuriating to them, Bernie Sanders says there's a reason why none of these presidents would do this. This is going to undermine the peace process and uh, Blumenthal out of Connecticut and so on. They all are saying the same thing. And then you've got Trump's action in terms of shutting down the illegal executive orders of Barack Obama in terms of stealing hundreds of millions of acres. And Trump just reverses a small part of a couple of these in Utah. The Bears Ears and the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments. They're not monuments. They don't want to go through the whole process of declaring it a national park. Instead, what he did was he went back and he found an obscure law that hadn't been used, never used in this way. It was never intended to be used in this way. The Antiquities Act, which was set up to preserve land that uh, was some kind of Indian antiquities or whatever, to preserve a small area there so it would not be looted by people who are looking for souvenirs and so forth to protect that area. The famous Devil's Tower that you see out there was done that way. And they only uh, it took uh, like a couple hundred acres around Devil's Tower. They didn't take hundreds of millions of acres, which is the way Obama used it. Because Obama wanted to lock up these lands for federal control. And that truly is stealing our land, stealing the people's land. That's what the whole Bundy issue is about. The fact that the federal government owns 80 to 90 percent of the land in some of these western states. And they're going to use it for their crony capitalist buddies. They're going to uh, sell this uh, as a senator, whether you're Harry Reid or you're John McCain. If you're part of that corrupt establishment, you can pass that uh, over to some foreign corporation, as John McCain did, the Tonto National Forest. Obama didn't protect that. They're going to turn that into a massive crater, and it's being turned over to a foreign corporation. This is something that has historical uh, significance to the Indians, cultural significance to them, religious significance to them. It is a natural area that was a recreational area that other people wanted to preserve. Instead, it's turned over to a foreign corporation that's going to strip mine it. You'll be able to see the hole from space. And that's what they want to do throughout Utah. That's why they were running all the ranchers off. That's why, uh, why Clive and Bundy took a stand. All the other ranchers in that area have been run off. He said, from where I am all the way to the Pacific Ocean, they run all the ranchers off because they want to take this land. They can use it for the uranium. They can use it for solar power projects of the Chinese. You name it. 
They've got a long list of things that they want to use it for personally. It's part of the Agenda 21 idea. They're going to lock us in the cities. The rest of the area is going to be off limits. So when President Trump rolls back just a little bit of these two projects where Obama misused a law and did it by executive order. And so President Trump came in and with his executive order, he repealed it. And so Patagonia, the people who sell clothing... Uh, for those of you who are outdoors, remember this as you're shopping. It was Patagonia who comes out and says, the president stole your land. That's right, but they didn't say which president. <laughs> it was Obama who stole our land, uh, not President Trump. Patagonia posted a small message underneath the message on its website calling Trump's executive orders shrinking Utah's Bears, Ears, and Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments, quote, an illegal move. No, it was Obama's moves that were illegal. But this is the way we're seeing they react, that they react to this. Even the people like Dianne Feinstein, Bernie Sanders, and others who have voted time and time again to move the uh, Jerusalem embassy are outraged when President Trump actually does what he says he's going to do. And that's why you've got these journalists coming back and attacking President Trump when he exposes this false narrative. And again, why would this guy think it was important to tweet out an empty stadium? Well, it's because he wants to ridicule the president. He wants to mock him. Oh, look, nobody showed up to his rally. Uh, no, actually they did. But then when President Trump did that, you have these other journalists backing up the Washington Post's uh, guy who tweeted this stuff out. He, he apologized and he retracted it. But the other people are saying he's a great reporter. He's a fantastic guide to this political age. I would say he is the icon of this political age. The hit and run false attack. Another one, Dan Pfeiffer, says Trump is attacking Dave Weigel because he is sad in vain. So it continues on. Or another one, Tommy uh, Vitor, I don't know who he works for. The irony of this clown wanting someone fired for misrepresenting a crowd size is too much. And yet they were the ones, aren't they, who made such a big deal about the size of the inauguration crowd and went on and on and on about it. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Well... That was their intent. Their intent was to ridicule. Another one, Jessica Valenti. The president of the United States targeting a reporter for mass harassment is a much bigger deal than a reporter mistakenly tweeting a photo. Why? Why is it a bigger deal? Why is it the president to, again, they, every time he makes a comment, every time he points out how they are lying in a weaponized way for their own political agenda, when he points out that they are not objective, that they're highly politicized and partisan, when he points that out, they go furious and they accuse him of being a tyrant who wants to shut down free speech. No, he has a bully pulpit. He has a right to speak as well. And uh, this other guy, Kyle Griffin, says the president calling for a journalist to be fired seems like a public threat to the First Amendment. See, that's where they're always coming with this. Uh, and it's like, no, you know, gelling him would be a threat to the First Amendment. Or maybe destroying his business as these people support with the gay wedding cake issue, right? Who, who's, who has free speech? Uh, can you compel other people to do things that they don't want to do? See, when you jail people or you shut down their businesses, but when you say, hey, this guy ought to be fired, or you ought to fire these players who are disrespecting the national anthem, the flag, veterans at these uh, football games, that's just good business advice for these people, advice that they won't take. Why? Because the NFL, just like the Washington Post, CNN, they're highly politicized, and they care more about their politics than succeeding. They'll be willing to let the NFL burn down just like they'll burn down CNN and Washington Post, and we'll be glad to see it. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. We have a couple of sales I want to tell you about before we go back to the Pentagon, trying to figure out where all the money and troops went. <laughs> they, have, they have lost trillions of dollars worth of money and $44,000, uh, $44,000, 44,000 soldiers. Yeah, it's that bad. Uh, when you get government this size, here's, here's the problem with Washington. When it has grown to the cancerous size that it is now, there's absolutely no way that anybody can control it. And we're seeing this. A good example, this is the Pentagon. Uh, how the purpose of government has been perverted, and it is absolutely, totally unmanageable. Unmanageable. Uh, before we get back to that, though, I just want to remind you of some of the sales that we have at InfoWarsStore.com. We have DNA Force, 33% off. At InfoWarsStore.com, this is an advanced formula designed to help energize mitochondrial function and sustain healthy cell cycles. Take a look at the research on BioPQQ. There's hundreds of 
uh, clinical studies showing BioPQQ and how effective it is. That is why DNA Force is such an expensive product and so difficult to produce. And a 33% discount off of that is a massive savings. So take advantage of that right now. It is something, if you look at the studies, that is very important for your health. It can have a great deal of benefit for your health at any age. Also, Vitamin Mineral Fusion Drink Mix has been 50% off for a while. It is selling so quickly. We're going to have to take this off very uh, in the next day or so. I'm not sure if this is the last day or if it's going to be ending at the beginning of the week, but it is now 50% off. It is our multivitamin and mineral formula. You can put it in a drink mix. It tastes great the way it is, or you can add whatever you want to to make it taste, uh, you know, to, to conform to whatever your tastes are. And you don't have to swallow a lot of pills. That's what I like about vitamin mineral fusion drink mix. Now 50% off. Finally, Super Blue fluoride-free products, 50% off. That's our toothpaste, our mouthwash. Again, it doesn't have fluoride, which can be harmful. If you look at the instructions on a typical fluoride toothpaste, it says, hey, if you swallow this stuff, uh, contact uh, poison control. Uh, we don't want to poison you. We've been trying to warn people uh, and give them water filters so they can filter out the fluoride that is put into the water source. Uh, there's been numerous studies showing how that's harmful. But iodine is actually very good, and it fights bacteria along with nano silver. I don't think you're going to find any other toothpaste anywhere that has nano silver. It's a great way to kill bacteria that cause gum disease. The gum disease causes tooth loss, and it also causes heart disease. And Super Blue fluoride-free toothpaste is a great tasting toothpaste. So try it now if you haven't tried it. It's 50% off. You don't have anything to lose. I guarantee that if you haven't tried this, uh, you're going to love it. And if you have tried it and you love it, that's a great time to stock up on it. 50% off Super Blue fluoride-free toothpaste products, mouthwash, and so forth at InfoWarsStore.com. And we thank you for your support. Let's take a look at what's going on with the Pentagon. Again, uh, one of the few legitimate uses of the federal government under the Constitution is to defend the country. But even that legitimate use can be abused if it is taken to extremes. And as Zero Hedge points out, the spirit of this country is totally adverse to a large military force. They didn't say that. Thomas Jefferson said that. He said that in a letter he wrote in 1807. But what do we have now? We have a global force to enforce the American empire. And as they point out, the United States has military personnel in nearly every country in the world, ranging from two liaison officers in Fiji to tens of thousands from all of the service branches in Japan and Germany, according to the report. Has it made us safer? I don't think so. When we are at war in seven different countries, I don't know how we continue to afford that. I don't know how that makes us safer. I don't know the, how that makes us freer or more prosperous. And I say, but perhaps the most important and equally absurd part of this is one considers the original beginnings of our humble republic envisioned by people like Madison and Jefferson is the fact that America's worldwide military presence is so big that the Pentagon itself can't track how many U.S. service members are deployed or where. This is something that is coming out of Stars and Stripes, the military newspaper. And the headline, they said, this is not the onion. The headline is, report, 44,000 unknown military personnel stationed around the world. So the U.S. military has more than 44,000 troops across the globe. The Pentagon claims it cannot track, according to a recent report. They are labeled as unknown. And again, this is not classified. It isn't like, oh, we can't tell you where they are. They put down unknown. And so Stars and Stripes is saying, uh, what's going on here? So they, they asked some officers about this. And they said, um, well, uh, <laughs> we're looking into it. They said in recent press uh, conferences, they've said, well, we have about 2,000 troops in Syria. But that was four times the previously acknowledged figure. So then an Army spokesperson told reporters that 4,000 troops were deployed to Syria, after which he awkwardly walked back the statement. That less, uh, less than 30 seconds later saying, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I misspoke there. There are approximately 500 in Syria. So what is it? Is it 2,000, 4,000, 500? Mm, they don't really know. An Army spokesman talking to Stars and Stripes said, our commitment is to be as transparent as we can within the constraints of operation security. But it's also the case, so it's not just classified stuff. It says also the case that the Pentagon acknowledged in a statement that it has no good way to track how many service members are stationed overseas where they are, and when they were there, according to Stars and Stripes. There is no one personnel system in the Defense Department that tracks the daily location of the personnel. So it isn't just, oh, it's classified. 
And so I look at this and I say, um, you know, they're looking at the missing money. In 2015 alone, they had a staggering six and a half trillion dollars in funds unaccounted for out of their budget. Two point eight trillion of wrongful adjustments occurring in just one quarter. Somebody should show this report to um, Bob Corker, who said he would not spend another penny. Uh, he would not allow the deficit to go up by one penny. Just remind him that uh, we've got, <laughs> we've got about nine nine and a half trillion dollars missing here. So maybe if he wants to be uh, Mr. Fiscal Hawk, maybe he should start looking at the Defense Department. But I look at these forty four thousand soldiers and they don't know where they are. I mean, are, are they like marooned on a Japanese island or something since World War II? Where did they go? They don't know because it's such a big bureaucracy, and that's the point. If you want to have better government, we're going to have to have smaller government. We're have to go back to a government that's the size of the Constitution. It isn't going to help us to have campaign spending limits or federal campaign finance. If you've got a black hole of power and money, you are going to draw the most corrupt people and programs into that. And there's nothing you're going to do to stop it. No reporting system, no system of prohibitions. When you're talking about tens of trillions of dollars to be had by any criminal who gets influence and in peddling in Washington, D.C., it's going to happen. And no prohibition is going to stop it. The only prohibition that's going to stop it is to get the money and the power out of Washington and back to the people to decentralize it. That was the original plan. The original plan was not to have us be an occupying force in every country in the world. The original plan was for America to not be an empire. The original plan was for citizens to have the ability, the training, to defend this country when and if that was necessary. And this is an absolute gargantuan distortion. It is like a metastasized cancer. And that is every aspect of our government. But of course, Pentagon especially, we see the National Defense Authorization Act always gets passed. And they'll put anything in there and get it passed. That's why you see so many corrupt things finding their way into the NDAA. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Roger Stone. Welcome back. I'm David Knight. We're going to be talking to Roger Stone, of course, an InfoWars contributor. You find him on The War Room Monday through Friday. Uh, that begins at uh, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And Roger is uh, on there pretty much every day, aren't you, Roger? I think uh, for one hour. But I wanted to talk to Roger today about a couple of things that are happening because Roger always knows what's going on, the inside baseball in Washington. And he wrote an article for Daily Caller talking about the time, it's time for real net neutrality. You know, Roger, when I was talking about uh, the news earlier, looking at the death threats to FCC Commissioner Pai, I mentioned the fact that they shut you down for nothing. And yet these are people saying, hey, we should sneak up behind him and inject him with bleach. Uh, we need to kill him, kill his family. All that stuff is left up there. They put this term up there, net neutrality, just like they had the Congressional Accountability Act which provided a $17 million slush fund to hide the sexual assaults of congressmen. Uh, we now have this thing called net neutrality. They always, they always come up with these wonderful labels because that's the high ground for their arguments, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, as they say, bass awkward. Uh, it, it is um, uh, ironic that they have grabbed the moral high ground in this argument. Let me try to break this down, David. The Net neutrality rules passed under Barack Obama are anything but. The only neutrality that they provide for is for the, the ISPs, the service providers, Comcast, Verizon, AT&T. It guarantees their equal access and equal treatment, but it leaves untouched the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Twitters. They're free to censor or defame conservative contributors uh, to silence our voices entirely, precisely what's happened in my own case. Now, I feel sorry for Ajit Pai, the FCC commissioner, because every single day, even though I'm still not on Twitter, you will find threats to kill me, disfigure my wife, kill my children, yeah. kill my grandchildren, kill my dogs. <laughs> Go Those back in time and kill everybody, <laughs> the, the, all yeah. of your ancestors, exactly, yeah. That's, that's and exactly. It's extraordinary. And those people are not banned. They are still very much on Twitter. So um, the new net neutrality rules 
provide for real protection of the First Amendment and free speech. So when you go online and you see liberals talking about net neutrality, that's the last thing they want. Uh, they want to continue to censor voices like Alex Jones or Infowars, Breitbart, Daily Caller, Big League Politics. Uh, they are uh, they're manipulating the algorithms. They're using a, a, a technique called shadow banning. They are attempting to provide us unequal access to this vibrant and important media. Uh, the, the That's right. We just had Julian Assange tweet out today. He said the the AI revolution will not be televised because they will use AI to censor people's speech about what is going on. That's what we're now seeing. You're talking about the algorithms uh, to censor people. And it's what we saw, what was it, uh, two or three weeks ago when you had the Twitter executive going before congressional testimony and um, giving congressional testimony. They said, wait a minute, we saw this uh, story from InfoWars. Uh, why was that there? Why wasn't that? Well, we took care of that. We took it down. Well, why did it take so long? Well, let's talk about that privately, Congressman. Uh, they, it's out in the open. They're talking about us and others by name. This is where the censorship is coming from. It's coming from the people who are pushing this so-called net neutrality. Thank goodness for the election of Donald Trump and the appointment and majority of commissioners at the FCC who understand this issue. We are yes. going to strike a blow for freedom here very, very shortly. Yes, very important. People understand where that is, is coming from. And what, uh, you know, when we look at this and we look at the case that's being argued before the Supreme Court right now, that we've seen several of these where you have a gay couple come in and say, we want a photographer or we want uh, somebody who's doing a wedding uh, to uh, to be at our wedding, and they say, no, I find that offensive. Uh, That's my personal choice not to do that. And they say, but you must do that. And yet they don't, wh whatever you think about that particular case, why, if a small company, an individual local baker or photographer must do this because they have a marketplace here, why aren't those same rules being applied to these massive social media companies uh, like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or Google itself? Why aren't those same rules being applied to them when they have a de facto monopoly? Why shouldn't they have to evenly serve everybody? That's the, the question that I think anybody's asking. Well, it's time for these big uh, internet companies to be regulated uh, like a, a utility. I mean, AT&T is a private company, but you cannot be denied a, a telephone. Look, I'm for individual freedom. That's the right to marry anyone you want. It's also the right to either deliver the, the wedding cake or not deliver the wedding cake, depending on your individual view. Yes. Uh, I, I hold both of these things equally. If we are for individual personal freedom, it must extend in this area as well. For too long, libertarian and conservative voices have been silenced on the internet. We have seen repeatedly the demonetization of uh, YouTube videos by conservative commentators and voices like Alex Jones and others. Uh, enough is enough. Uh, Donald Trump's election is going to allow us to grab back free access of the internet for everyone. By the way, under these rules, liberals and progressives could not be censored either. I'm for free speech for everyone, David. That's right, and when we see the uh Mainstream media, as we have several times, it's like almost a daily occurrence. We have some major story where they lie about the data or they misrepresent it, uh, saying, oh, look, this came out at uh, uh, before President uh, Trump was elected. We had conversations uh, that we've now, oh, no, that happened uh, later on, and we already knew about that. Or just as they did in the last uh, uh, couple of days, saying that uh, President Trump's son was uh, Talk, trying to get WikiLeaks information, and it turns out that it had already been tweeted out a day earlier. Somebody sent him an email. He said, I hadn't even seen it. He said, people are sending me emails all the time. But when they put this stuff out and President Trump exposes it and criticizes them for these false attacks, they always accuse him of censorship. It's not censorship. Yeah, no, look, it's laughable. The hypocrisy of the left is extraordinary. You will remember when Alex Jones and I first raised the questions about Hillary Clinton's health. Um, this wasn't based on something we'd seen online. This was based on our own two eyes. 
You could see her coughing fits. You could see <laughs> based her on her two eyes as well, because they were going in different directions at certain times, right? <laughs> right. And, you know, she, she she needed help to get up one flight of stairs. Yeah. Uh, now suddenly that was off limits. We were we were denounced. The Clinton campaign attacked Alex by name. They put out a written statement accusing me of making the whole thing up. Now, however, you see the mainstream media viciously attacking Donald Trump over his health. Oh. He, he's sick. He's not well. He's crazy. He's non compass mentis. That's perfectly all right. Look, this is laughable. Yeah. I predicted this on the Alex Jones show months ago. If Mueller uh, shoots and misses, which I think he certainly shoots, how that plays out, we don't know. Then they will move to the 25th Amendment strategy, removing Donald Trump because he's quote unquote crazy which he most certainly is not. Uh, but you see Senator Corker, you see Don Lamone from uh, CNN, you see all these voices, uh, more and more, uh, Keith Olbermann, although I don't know how he tweets from a straitjacket, it must be interesting. <laughs> uh, you know, this whole idea that Trump is, uh, is not mentally well, that's perfectly acceptable commentary. But when we criticized Hillary's Obviously, frail health. Well, we were bully boys. And of really. course, it's the uh, it's the vast left wing conspiracy that they keep repeating over and over again. The uh, the Russian conspiracy, for which they have no proof whatsoever, and they uh, cannot get away from that. That's we're going to talk about that when we come back. I want to ask Roger Stone about a uh, column that he had about the bad advice that President Trump is getting from his lawyers. Also, want to ask him about the reports that retired uh, CIA agents uh, working with Blackwater founder uh, claim that the that H.R. McMaster approved the spy job on the Trump family. Welcome back. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Roger Stone. We're going to ask Roger about this tweet that uh, President Trump's lawyer, John Dowd, took credit for it at a mea culpa. It was a head scratcher at the very least. It really got the left fired up. It's another one of these uh, nothing burgers that they thought they really had something, but it certainly got them talking. And the fact that he would word something like that imprecisely uh, and then take credit for it, saying, I had control of the tweets. We're going to talk to Roger about that. Uh, before we do, real quickly, I'll remind you of some of the items that we have on sale at InfoWarsStore.com. We have DNA Force now 33% off at InfoWarsStore.com. We also have Vitamin Mineral Fusion Drink Mix. That's our multivitamin and mineral formula that you can drink. It's a great tasting drink mix. You don't have to swallow a lot of pills to get your baseline vitamins and minerals. That is now 50% off. And we have 50% off all the Super Blue fluoride-free products. That's our toothpaste, mouthwash. They do not have fluoride, but instead they have iodine and nano silver. That's going to kill the bacteria that leads to gum disease and tooth loss as well as heart disease. And it is a great tasting toothpaste. If you haven't tried it, now is a great time to try it, 50% off at InfoWarsStore.com. And if you tried it, and I'm sure you'll love it, uh, it's a great time to stock up. 50% off Super Blue fluoride-free products at InfoWarsStore.com. Roger, uh, you've been saying that this tweet that went out saying, uh, I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI. That was then used by the left to say, look, this is obstruction of justice. He fired Comey because of this. And then the attorney, uh, his attorney, John Dowd, came out and said, well, I wrote that. It was uh, sloppy. It was very inaccurate. Uh, I mean, wh what do you think about his lawyers here? Uh, <laughs> no, I, don't, that episode. I think the president's lawyers are giving him incredibly bad advice. I really don't think they understand the enmity of the deep state and the two-party elite duopoly that have run this country into the ground. They have every intention of removing our president. Uh, it is unrealistic for uh, Ty Cobb, a lawyer who obviously stole his name from a baseball player, uh, <laughs> to tell the president that he will shortly have a letter from Mueller uh, clearing him entirely on the question of Russian collusion. I'm telling you that isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, I believe the president's lawyers are sleepwalking him right into the blade. Uh, so. this, this is an extraordinary mistake. The president needs to take uh, the Mueller inquiry more seriously. This is a completely partisan uh, uh, get Trump effort that is not going to stop. And that tweet 
um, at least on the face of it, appears to set the president up for an obstruction charge. Remember, previously, he told us that Flynn was fired because he lied to the vice president. Now he's suddenly saying, no, Flynn was fired because he lied to the FBI. That would, of course, mean that when he told Comey to uh, end the Flynn investigation, he was arguably guilty of obstruction. Uh, so then John Dow dives on the grenade and says, no, the president didn't send that. I sent it. Uh, this is not only sloppy, but I think it's dangerous. The yeah. president needs yeah. to get real. As I said in the first segment, I'm convinced that if Mueller shoots uh, and misses, that they will then move to a 25th Amendment strategy, removing Trump because they claim he is non compass mentis, that he is crazy around the bend. Uh, I've talked to the president. He's just as sharp as he's ever been. This is a false narrative being promulgated mostly by the talking heads on CNN. But the political establishment will never rest until they can negate the results of the last election. That's what this is really about. And you are not doing the president a service by uh, telling him that he's about to be cleared when, in my opinion, he is not. Now, uh, the Drudge Report picked up my interview with the New York Daily News on this subject last week, for which I am gratified. Um, but I think it's very important that the president's supporters and the president's friends tell him the truth, that his lawyers are leading him down the primrose path to the gallows. I, I believe that uh, with my entire heart and soul, and I am deeply, deeply concerned that they yeah. are not yeah. taking the Mueller inquiry seriously enough. You know, I, I think probably his best defender, maybe he needs to get rid of these guys and hire Alan Dershowitz. You know, he wrote a book called Trumped Up. He said, there's nothing here. There isn't any crime. He can fire the FBI director. The FBI director works for him under the, under the Justice Department. And he said, uh, and so so has uh, Judge Napolitano. He says, look, it's not obstruction if you're not trying to hide something that is criminal. There is no crime here. And so the only thing you could say is, uh, hey, I don't like, uh, I want you to go spend your, your time trying to find criminals and terrorists who are uh, uh, trying to do things uh, here in the United States instead of going down this um, rabbit trail with this. That'd be perfectly legitimate to do. And if you feel like the guy is wasting resources on a political witch hunt, it'd be perfectly fine to shut that down as well. Because if this isn't about a crime, if Comey and uh, Mueller and the rest of these people, Rod Rosenstein, if this is a political persecution looking to get something on Trump and others with a process crime, they'd be perfectly fine to shut that down. There's absolutely no reason that you couldn't do that. Well, uh, it's obvious from the president's tweets and some of his public comments that his lawyers have convinced him that it's somehow improper for him to give direction to the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. false. The Justice Department is an extension of the executive branch. The president has every right to give direct orders to Jeff Sessions. Now, I personally am opposed to the idea of firing Mueller, although he certainly merits it, because of the uh, obvious mainstream media analogy to the Saturday Night Massacre and Richard Nixon. It's unnecessary, David. The president needs to direct Jeff Session, give him a direct order, appoint a special prosecutor in the matter of Uranium One. That would immediately entail a federal investigation of Mr. Mueller, the former FBI director, Mr. Comey, the former FBI director, assistant FBI director Andrew McCabe, and the uh, supervising U.S. attorney in the Uranium One matter, Rod Rosenstein. That's right, the if whole group. Those, if those four gentlemen are under federal investigation by a special prosecutor, say Andrew McCarthy or Judge Andrew Napolitano or Trey Gowdy or some other honest broker, well, they cannot possibly continue to function uh, in this uh, get Trump brigade that is the special counsel. Um, it is interesting that as soon as I propose this, within minutes, literally, Vanity Fair and uh, Raw Story, the worst of the worst left-wing fake news sites, were out with stories saying why the president should not and could not do this. 
That's how I know it's exactly the right thing to do. <laughs> oh, I think so, that would be a genius move because, again, he doesn't have to make it look as if it's uh, they're going to argue obstruction if he tries to fire uh, Mueller, even though he has the authority, even though there isn't any special prosecutor law. That was allowed to expire in 1999. We don't even know the rules under which the special prosecutor is operating because there is no law. And so actually, there isn't any actually, process. Actually, David, we do know he's operating under no rules That's whatsoever. Right. That's right. Yeah, they won't declare it. Yeah. Under the old special prosecutor law, expanding the scope of his probe requires the written permission of the attorney general. This guy does anything he wants. That's the right. Stunning uh -huh. news. And there was oversight by three judges and so forth. None of that stuff applies anymore. He just does whatever he wishes. And the most chilling piece of information this week is the fact that the uh, special prosecutor has subpoenaed the Deutsches Bank records into the $300 million portfolio of real estate developments by Donald Trump. Yes. What does this have to do with Russian collusion? Nothing whatsoever. It's a witch hunt. It's time for Mr. Mueller and Mr. Comey and Mr. McCabe and Mr. Rosenstein it's their time in the barrel, so to speak. If you want to get a process crime against somebody, the easiest way to do it, first of all, is to, to have a surprise deposition on them and say, oh, you lied on some of the details. This is what they did to Flynn. But the next easiest thing to do is financial crimes because it is so complex and there's so many different rules and regulations and it's subject to interpretation. As anybody who has looked at the IRS rules know, it is far more complicated with these international rules and that's ultimately what they're after. I think your strategy is exactly what needs to happen, Roger Stone. Uh, the idea that, uh, that they would start to investigate Uranium One, which is where all of these people running this thing without any oversight, without any rules, without any law, they were all involved in Uranium One. Well, that's it for today's broadcast. Thank you again, Roger, for joining us. I'm David Knight. And again, join me in the morning at 8 a.m. for real news right here on the InfoWars Network.